uh, I know that Andrew, you um, try to, I don't know if shy away from the term is correct, but you definitely sort of cast this as, you know, um, a hybrid between AI and lawyers. Um, but Joshua, I think that you are sort of unabashed about the idea that this is certainly going to be replacing uh, some lawyers. Um, I guess to continue on that question, uh, how do you guys uh, feel about that? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's well, I, let's yeah. back let's back it up. I think that that part of the answer to that question has to do with the difference uh, between your two products slash services. Um, Ross mm -hmm. Intelligence. Uh, does one thing and do not pay does another. So why, why don't you start by telling us um, in your own words as founders and developers, uh, what each of them do. Could you tell us about Ross, Andrew. Yeah, so what Ross does is really what we're trying to ensure is that lawyers can get from question to answer uh, in terms of their legal research efficiently. So we've built a system, it's a, uh, an AI assistant for human lawyers. Um, they essentially kind of have a conversation with the law. So they don't keyword search, Boolean search is gone. They ask their questions like they would a human colleague. And what Ross does is it surfaces the direct passages of law um, that, that best answers their question. And so that's one part of what we do. The second part of what we do is the, the machine learning aspect where the lawyers who use Ross actually upvote and downvote Ross's passages accordingly. And so the amazing thing about Ross is that it's always getting smarter. So every day, um, that a lawyer logs in, it's smarter than the day it was before. Hmm. Okay, and tell us about Do Not Pay, Joshua. Do Not Pay is a chatbot to help people with their low-level legal problems, for example, parking tickets or delayed flights. And the way it works is it asks a few questions and users can answer in their own words. For example, it will ask, um, what was wrong with your parking ticket? Once it knows the issue with things like parking tickets, it will take down a few details, such as the um, road name where you got the ticket, and then place these details into a generic challenge letter, which you can send to the local authorities. Right. So right off the bat, we've got a couple of similar kinds of services, but tackling very different parts of the legal process. Do not pay seems like a very um, limited, targeted kind of product service. It's only going to do one thing. It's going to do it really well because it does that one thing and continues learning. Uh, and, and Ross casts a far wider net and, and would look down its virtual nose, I think, at appealing park, parking tickets. Does that sound accurate? Andrew? I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, but I, <laughs> I, the last part, but I do, I do think they're kind of different services for sure. And what I really uh -huh. like about uh, what Do Not Pay is doing is, you know, a lot of the time, folks, when you get a parking ticket, it's not an, uh, an incredibly large amount, but it's enough that that means, you know, dinner or, you know, that means a, a whole bunch of things. And so to sure. go and get a lawyer to appeal that, sometimes it might cost more than the ticket itself. And so, you know, I really like that we're immediately seeing AI come in and helping folks there. Um, and then, and, and then what we're doing with our, with AI is allowing lawyers to be able to cut down on a lot of that inefficient upfront grunt work that they have to do, which allows them to actually help clients quicker and actually more efficiently. So in both cases, what you're seeing is that AI isn't really taking away, but really enabling access to justice. And so sometimes when you get the robot analysis or you get like folks thinking about some sort of an AI, uh, Armageddon, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, a, a lot of that stuff comes from sci-fi. And really what AI is doing is, is helping uh, a lot of folks. So I think we've got from, from those descriptions and comments, a partial answer to Emery's question. Um, and Joshua, tell me if you think I'm right, that the reason you're able to disintermediate parking ticket lawyers is because they're not that necessary to the process to begin with. There's not that much that is complex about what they're doing. They, they, you know, they knew a few rules and if then scenarios that could be uh, amply handled by an AI. But, but other than that, uh, there's not a lot of value add that they're bringing to the process. Am I capturing that? 
Absolutely. Um, I mean, from my experience, you have these guys copying and pasting templates into Microsoft Word and then charging $100 to do so. And I think mm. that's just the perfect thing to be kind of disrupted by technology. And I'm actually quite surprised someone hasn't already done it. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so, so tell us more about do not pay. Um, let's, let's delve a little deeper here into um, the... The reason that you decided that uh, this was a necessary thing, you began to answer that a minute ago, that uh, um, this was the kind of area where, where lawyers aren't really necessary to help people carry out their legal rights, correct? Yes, and I, I know I got it, I, like this idea from personal experience. Um, when I turned 18, the driving age in the UK, I got a large number of parking tickets myself. And out of necessity, I had to figure out how to fight these tickets because I didn't have the money to pay. And one route was um, through these lawyers who obviously I couldn't afford either. And I looked at the work that they were doing and it seemed, as you said, um, just to be very um, formulaic. And I thought it would be such a great idea to create a bot that could replace them for free. Hmm. So that brings up my question. I mean, on the spectrum of artificial intelligences, I know that Obviously, Ross is using IBM's Watson that has you know, made national news for beating Jeopardy. It's very complex, natural language process. I don't, you know, black box magic going on there. But in the mm -hmm. other side, we have, you know, old school chatbots like Eliza and Cleverbot. Where on that spectrum does chatbot reside? And my question, my follow-up then is if it's really close to the Cleverbot side of the spectrum, um, does that mean that this sort of model can be expanded to other areas of the law outside of parking tickets and uh, flight delays. Uh, 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 yes, so it's definitely on the clever bot side, um, and basically, it's it's quite simple AI, and I think it's quite powerful. Almost how simple uh, what one can do with such simple AI. Um, the challenge for me was understanding what a user has said. For example, there are a million ways to say I got a parking ticket or the parking bay was too small, and mm. through this kind of clever bot AI. I figured out how to translate that into a defense that the bot can take and um, mm. generate. So is this, um, does the chat bot, um, have, or the do not pay bot rather, does that rely on some kind of like government API to uh, interface with the, with the law? Or I mean, is this literally just um, you're taking documents and interpreting what the users are saying in the chat and then just putting it in the, the old documents and submitting it by email? It depends on the jurisdiction. The um, chatbot currently works in the entirety of the UK and New York City. Um, in some UK areas, it will actually send the appeal automatically, not through a government API because they don't exist, but kind of through brute <laughs> force from one website to another. Um, uh -huh. However, I haven't managed to accomplish that in New York City, and there are all sorts of legal issues with doing that because it could be considered hacking. Um, so hmm. I'm very kind of tend like um, thoughtful about doing that. But um, yes. Could you go into in some, some of those other legal difficulties that you've run into? Uh, yes. So another legal difficulty is obviously, um, is that if this is a, law a lawyer, it doesn't have to be licensed by the Bar Association. However, because parking tickets are a consumer issue, um, I've been advised that that's not actually a problem. However, I, I really love reading these kind of interpretations of why do not pay should not exist for regulatory reasons. Um, <laughs> but I've had no, no problems from the regulators themselves. But other lawyers love commenting how um, it's breaking all the regulations. But I love to see regulators actually approach me because they haven't. <laughs> sure, there's, there's a good analogy there between taxi drivers and Uber. There's, there's a bit of encroaching on somebody's turf that uh, they weren't that probably flew at them out of left field. Um, you bring up a really interesting point, and I'm glad that you are, that is front and center uh, in your mind, um, that people developing tools uh, like this, particularly yours, Joshua, um, have to have the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act uh, front and center uh, when they're thinking about how they're gonna interface with government systems and get data out. Um, what sort of precautions are you taking to make sure that you're, you're not crossing that line into hacking? Well, since the um, kind of popularity of the site, I've had lots of lawyers reach out to me and offer pro bono advice. So basically, mm -hmm. I, before I do anything, I consult with my lawyers 
um, I just ensure that because the last thing I want is for this to be shut down. It's be, been helping so many people. So I'm just making sure, basically just consulting with lawyers to ensure that what I'm doing is not illegal. But at the moment, I'm confident that I've stayed above water. Good. <laughs> Can I follow that over to Ross then? Uh, to Andrew, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, the issue that uh, uh, Joshua brought up about um, does an AI have to be licensed? I mean, I think that once we start getting to the more... Um, dense legal weeds issues that I think that Ross is designed to answer somewhere along the way, you do have the questions of, is this AI license? How have you guys approached that? And I'm sure that you're seeing pushback from that as well. You want to discuss that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we're actually not getting much pushback on that at all. And the reason why <laughs> that is, is because the people who are asking Ross questions are lawyers themselves. Um, the responses go to the lawyer who asked the question. They then use that to then form their opinion. So it's, it's the human lawyer is never taken out of the process, just enhanced. And therefore, we haven't had any questions um, about that just because all the folks who, who use Ross are lawyers themselves.